Hello y'all, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist, and today we are painting this super cute little Highland cow with a little Santa hat on. So this gives you a good look, we'll have this visual with us the whole time while we paint. And I just wanted to show it to you, and then also we have a traceable, so let me give you a look at that. Alright, so here's our little traceable, and this comes with your kit, we also have the transfer paper. So that it can be transferred right to your canvas makes it very fun and easy for beginners so we've got that for you we also have a separate tutorial just for the transfer process so we encourage you to go look at that and that is on our website and also with all of your painting kit instructions so without further ado we'll go ahead and get started with the painting i'm going to go ahead and switch camera views and we'll place this down and we'll get started all right so here we go camera. Ta-da! Lovely. All right. So I've got all my supplies all set up here. I've got my water, place for my paint, uh, my paints over here, and then of course let's talk about our little family of brushes. All right. So here we go. We've got Mama, Little Buddy, and then Little Bit. And then of course some napkins. And then here's our sweet little canvas. I did go ahead and work ahead and do the transfer process onto the canvas, so we're all good to go here. Um, the other thing that I'm gonna go ahead and do today is a lot of inking. So every paint kit comes with a permanent marker. So this just makes it very easy so you do not lose your trace. And I'm gonna go over a lot of these hard lines that we do not wanna lose. So it just gives you a lot of freedom as you start to paint that all of these lines will bleed through that paint a little bit and so it will actually serve you in a good way. Sometimes that's not desirable and I always let you know that at the beginning of the class. There are times when we may not want to ink out everything but this is definitely a time when it will definitely help us. So I've got my little Santa hat here. All good to go. And then I'm just going to outline around a lot of the soft little hairs here. We'll just do a little tiny outline. But I'm not going to do hard lines all over the interior here. That's not really necessary. But I definitely want to hard line around the space area with the nose and the little smile we have going on because we definitely want to keep that intact. I'll go ahead and blacken that in. That's a nice little help. And then I went ahead and gave him a little smile. Initially, it was a little bit more of a realistic, just straight across the line, which is more common when you see a photograph. But when we do a painting, we can give it a little bit of some personality and change a little bit of that reality. So I changed it and made him smile. All right, now these are little holly leaves. We're good to get those in place. And these are our little holly berries. Now, these are the string lights that come across. Definitely helpful to have those bleed through the paint. Most definitely. Got a little loop here with that string. Are just the little bases of the lights. Like a vintage bulb here. It's really sweet. More holly berries. Another little string that comes down to connect that light. Now these are little snowflakes. Just a bit of an abstracted view of those. I am definitely going to outline those as well. They will have color 
over them when we get done. But see, as we do our background, you don't have to worry about losing your trace here. This will bleed through and keep that shape intact. It almost kind of has a little bit of a flower pattern to begin with. to do. Can you start those fun little patterns? So I use a real delicate hand here. It's like two diagonal lines. And you can even use a little ballpoint pen if you're a little concerned about your lines being a little bit too thick. Okay, so we have a great start now on our cute little Highland cow. I'm going to go ahead and put this away. And we can go ahead and get started with our lovely backgrounds. So we have like an abstract background. So, all right, let's talk about our paint here a little bit first. So we've got um, your acrylic paints here. Mine are already used a little bit, so yours will come brand new. And as you twist them open, there's going to be a little bit of a silver foil lining. You will have to lift that off to be able to get the paint to come out. And let's see, I want to start with some white to begin with. So we'll be using, I've already got a little bit of my titanium white out and my Mars black out, but this is our titanium white. We'll have a little bit of that out in the beginning. Also, Mars black will be out. Ooh. Oh yeah, so I'm just going to use this. So here is a little uh, dollop of white paint. And then let's do a little tiny touch of the black. We're going to mix up a little bit of that light gray. And then I also want a little bit of some blue nearby. So I'm going to pick up some primary cyan blue, a little touch of that. And every now and again, there's also a little hint of some cadmium yellow. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some cadmium yellow off to the side. All right, so I'm gonna be alternating back and forth between lots of the titanium white and a little bit of that light gray. And as I go ahead and place it on the canvas, I just go ahead and push it back, back and forth, make like little tiny little X's. So I picked up some pure titanium white, also a little bit of that gray that we had mixed up with the white and the black. And I'm just gonna push that back and forth. And then every now and again, I'll barely dip into a little bit of that primary cyan blue. Kind of work that back and forth. And you can already start to see how the permanent marker is bleeding through. Also, if you are a little bit more heavy handed and you feel like you're even covering up the ink, you can add a little bit of water to this and that will make it a little bit more translucent. So I do have to cut in a little bit now. I'm coming in around this horn. I'm going to leave that intact. So I can use the brush a little bit differently now. So as I want to do more of a cut in line, I can hold it more like a pencil. That allows that thin line edge to just go around that horn. 
And then when I work back into the larger area, then I can go ahead and hold the brush more over to the side, parallel to the canvas, and just continue on with that little bit of like crisscross action. It looks like the letter X back and forth. Little bit of uh, some turquoise in here too. Better mix of that. So I'm going to add a little tiny amount of the viridian with the primary cyan blue and some white. We're going to mix those up together. See that's changing a little bit. You can kind of see it. I'm going to place that on the canvas. You can see a bit more. Now we're going to add a little white to that. This should be a very playful part of the process. You can make this as long of a process as you want or as short of a process as you want, really. So there's no telling how many layers you might want to do just to help you relax a little bit more. And just about one layer and zip through it pretty quickly. Add a little bit more water. Let's grab some more white. So I'm doing a little bit of loose cut in here around the holly leaves and the face. And I realize this will bleed through so I will not lose the detail there to be able to work back in. bit of loose overpaint over the bottom hairs here that come down on the chin area. Because we definitely want that background behind any of the hairs that come out in the foreground. And I'm going to grab a little bit more white here. So we're just getting a nice light coat of some of those blues that work into the background. And if you wanted to make this a little bit more of just that blue, you could eliminate the viridian and just stick more with your primary cyan blue and your white and even your black for that touch of gray and it will just make it the tones quite a bit uh, cooler, more like this in here. So this is that little ear that I'm painting around. feel how I start to bring in a lot more of that white right over the top that's just pure white that creates a lot of variety in that background really interesting little highlights And you want to bring this right next to the hat and the horn. So we are painting over the snowflake. That's definitely what is absolutely desired because the snowflake is so delicate over the top of the background that you definitely want to make sure that all the background's completely done and you will be able to see the shape push through. And honestly, even if you were to paint over the snowflake to where it was just 
unrecognizable. The pattern of it is so simple, it's a pretty easy step to teach and learn at that point too, at the very end, and we'll place those in in the background. So either way, I think you're pretty safe on that. of fun little highlights. You can see mine's a little bit different this time. Every time I paint, I'm a little bit loose and free with it. I'm not just too exactly committed to the exact way that it was before. All right, now I had a little bit of that cadmium yellow, and we're gonna sweep a little bit of that through. Kind of drag it across my hand. Let's cream just a little bit of a shadow. Side sweeps in there. And let's pull in a little bit more of this one. Lightly kind of drag it. Beautiful. Okay, let's go ahead and rinse out. Let's talk about brush care a little bit. These are acrylic paints. They do set up and dry very quickly. They can set up in sometimes less than five minutes. So you always want to make sure that just in case, I would leave your brush, you either clean it immediately or let it rest in the water. Don't ever just let a brush with paint sit on your napkin or else you could get distracted by a phone call or something and then next thing you know, you'll come back to a completely ruined brush because it'll just create more of a stick than a brush at that point. That was my puppy dog in the background. Her name's Miss Ira. She has a, a little sneezing. She's been outside. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and work on some of that. We're going to get started with the base areas underneath the lights, which is, you know, quite a bit. We've got our um, face and then the white part here and then the red part up on top. We'll do the lights at the very end. So I'm rinsing out Mama. Let's go ahead and dry off. Okay, so I need a cool red. So I'm going to grab some primary magenta. This is more of like a pink color. Do a little bit of that here. and some cadmium red. We'll be mixing those two together to make a cool red. All right, so I'm gonna use my mama brush again. So cadmium red, primary magenta, let's mix those two together. Paint 
where the string part of the light goes. Careful with your cut in here. So line work again, hold it more like a pencil. Use that line edge of the brush to create that line, and then as we smooth back in for more coverage, then again we can relax with it a little bit and hold it a little bit more parallel to the canvas. So that's beautiful, that's the top of the hat. And if you're in a little bit of shading in the hat too, you can use just a tiny amount of a little bit of some blackened red. So use just a tiny little touch of the black, very tiny, and then I'll just barely use the line edge of the brush, just kind of drag it up for a little bit of a line through there, so that creates a little bit of a shadow. So we have some little bit of some creases happening there. It's real subtle. Okay, we'll give this red just a tiny bit of time to set up and dry before we go back into the white just nearby. And let's go ahead and work on the brown part here of our lovely little cow. So our Highland cow. So we're going to make some brown. Alright, so we're going to start with some cadmium orange. Nice big dollop of that. And what's beautiful is some Mars Black with our cadmium orange makes brown. Alright, so I'm going to, we're going to go back in with Mama. Grab some black. And mix those two together. See a little bit of that black makes a very light brown, and then the more black we add, makes a darker brown. And of course, we still have some of this uh, cadmium yellow nearby, so a little bit of that can also be really fun in here. So I'm going to go ahead and push this. Into that shape. And initially, we're just going to get a nice base of color. I'm not going to be too concerned about doing a lot of the paint work yet for the hair. I'm just trying to get that base of color down. And then as I do reach this end, then I just kind of turn it on the end and I do kind of pull down for a little bit more of that hair texture. And then let's avoid the little light. Make sure I'm cutting around that.
And then this is our little ear, but I do want to have a little bit of some separation between the ear and the other hair, so I grabbed a little bit of black. We're going to make sure that's reinforced with that darkness. I added a little bit more of the cadmium yellow to this just to make sure that it was contrast, contrast near that line there. And we're going to work that into that little shape there. So again, just nice coverage over that surface area. It's going to get that locked in. And then, let's go ahead and rinse out. Dry off. And then we've got our cadmium yellow here. I'm also going to take some primary yellow. And then some white. So a little bit of white. Let that brown lightens that up quite a bit. So this is my little body brush, little square top here. And this paint's still pretty wet, so I'm going to just kind of use the line edge of the brush and hold it like a pencil and just kind of pull down. Now this is when we start to really work in what looks more like the texture of hair. So I use that line brush side there. And pull that down into that shape. Here at the top, I will have to kind of break the flow of that to cut in around that little Christmas ornament, the light, the Christmas light. I'm going to grab just a hint of yellow too and kind of pull that in. Open it yellow and the light. Nice little touch here. And if your brush, sometimes the brush can get a little bit thick with paint, so you can do a little bit of firm pressure here on the end to get it nice and thinned back out to have like thinner lines as you create the texture of this. I'm going to change directions a little bit, make what almost kind of feels like little parentheses. So these are coming around the side here. So we're getting some really fun texture in there. And we also want to have a little bit of this happening over the ear. So still working into these lighter shades of brown and our yellow. Again, I'm going to do just a few of these little, it feels like little parentheses, that little hair that comes in over the top. So just some really fun texture there. All right, also, with this being so much lighter than that brown, Come in with more white, a little touch of that yellow. I'm going to go ahead and work into the front here. So I wanted this to be a lot darker 
than the brown. So it's got some really nice contrast to keep this part of the face shape really intact. a little bit of a sloppy overpaint and then a little bit of water to make it transparent so you can see how it will definitely bleed through here you don't want to lose that smile or the nuance of the nose that we already have placed in there kind of follow that out a little bit all right now we've got that loose sloppy overpaint i don't want to don't be scared because it's still bleeding through here. So I rinsed out my little buddy. We're going to go back in with our little bit brush. Now we're going to add a little tiny touch of the black to the darkest shade of brown. Let's darken that up a little bit. Kind of twirl the head of the brush into the paint. Have a nice fine point to work with here. And then we're going to go ahead and paint over this little section. So these little nostrils kind of feel like almost like a little loop in terms of how that is shaped. So you can just kind of paint in like a little loop, just a little line across, and again another little loop. Or it kind of feels like a little raindrop in terms of what you might tell your brain to kind of relax through this process. Right, here's that little smile to give a hint of a smile. Very cute. And then we're going to Reinforce this little line here with the black. Alright, so that cute little face is definitely intact there. some fun making some of those little hairs come down in the base. So we'll pull down and then lift off with a light hand. I'm going to grab a little bit more of that black. keep my highlights. I'm going to take a little bit, come back in with the white, and the paint's still wet, a little bit of soft wind in there. down pure white now and it kind of mixes in with the wet paint that's already there so it does subdue it a little bit and then of course if it becomes a little bit too radical of a contrast and bright over the top and you can just work back in a little bit more of the brown right on top kind of soften that up a little bit
super cute there. Just a little bit more texture. All right, very fun. Okay, so now we need to work on our little horns, I think, because we've got a lot of this color just mixed up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of a black outline around the horn. using my little bit brush. Just have a little bit more white up here on top. Okay, we have a little bit more of that black at the base too, which creates a little bit of a shadow, which is nice. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and twist that out and I'll go back in with more of my black. We're gonna do the other side. Line here. And now let's work back into that softer brown and push that in the middle. And a little touch of white right up here at the top. Make it a little bit more slender right up here. with a little bit of that color I had in the very beginning. And just taper the outside here. Twirl here into that light highlight. We'll just add that highlight just kind of around the outside. Okay. Alright, let's go ahead and work on our green next. Alright, so we've got some cadmium green. and some Viridian Green. We even have some bright yellow green, which is kind of fun. Let's 
stick with our little bit brush. We're going to start with our bright yellow green and cadmium green. into these kind of shapes here. Turn that other part down. All right, more green leaves here. These are our fun little holly leaves. Once we add a little bit of darker detail, that will help those make a little bit more sense. Just kind of doing our base coat into that shape. Lots of little curves around the little holly leaves. Get green all the way around our little berries. All right, looks good. Let's start right off. Let's go ahead and hit reload on more of our cool reds. I'm going to do some cadmium red and some primary magenta. I'll mix those two together again. So just kind of hold it like a pencil. Again, even mix, equal mix, two dollops, primary magenta, cadmium red. Mix those two together. And then just kind of put a nice dollop on the end of the brush and spin that in a circle. Get you that out a little bit there. All right, rinse out, dry off. Now we can go ahead and work in a little bit of our pure white here. I have a little bit of some white on the mango brush. You can add a little tiny, tiny hint of black to this too to make it a very light, light heather gray. You just have to be very careful that you don't get it too dark. That is what I see a lot with beginners is that they just, they misjudge the amount of black because it is honestly, sometimes it can be, I mean it could be a visual, like that tiny of a touch of the black just into a big dollop of white. And that is honestly about all that it can handle, or it gets just way too dark too fast, and then it doesn't even really look white anymore. So I just barely added a tiny amount of that black to the white, gives it just a hint of light gray. It's not really necessary though, you can't just go in with pure white. And get that into, this is 
that little ball on the end of the hat. Okay, and then we also need to work on the white band of the hat. This is our little Santa hat. So I'm using Now we can also do a little outline around this band with the black and even just that little touch of black kind of softly mixing in with the white is usually all we need to get just a little hint of that light going on this band. So I'll show you that here momentarily. So we've got a nice thick coat of the white. Alright, let's go ahead and let that sit until I get a chance to clean it. We'll come back in with our little bit brush and the black. And so, just kind of fairly light, light, gentle hand here. And see that white's still a little bit wet. So staying a nice soft fade between the two. So it kind of works into that white that's still wet on the canvas. And then we're going to come back in and do a little outline around this little ball of white here too. And so I picked up a lot of white, so I rinsed out, dried off, and do just a little touch of black now to check the brush, make sure there's no extra water. And do a little hint of the black now around the edge of the Santa hat. Alright, all other black lines I'm going to wait a little bit, give us a little bit of time now because we're going to start to work into the ornaments. We want to get that color in first and then we'll do any black string lights that might just kind of come back out into the foreground over the top. Alright, so let's see. Come back in here. Little buddy again. Let's go ahead and rinse out, dry off. Now let's go back into the bulbs with some color. Now we've got some beautiful colors we can work in here. This first color, uh, I'm going to do some violet with a little bit of the uh, primary magenta. So, clean spot. And this violet and primary magenta. And then we'll also add some white to that. So here's the violet, here's the primary magenta, and
really pretty. And then we're gonna do a little bit lighter here, more magenta, more white, a softer pink in this one. I'm going to grab some yellow, primary yellow. That's the brightest yellow. Let's get a visual on that. Super cute. And let's do another one up here. Got a little bit of that cadmium in there too. some of that bright yellow green. That's that lightest green we had. Nice. Okay, now, uh, we have some of that bright yellow green. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this primary cyan blue some white. Let this be a light blue. So that was our primary cyan blue and some white. I even had a little touch of that bright yellow green still on my brush. There might be a little hint of that in here too. Very fun. Let's rinse out. And we're going to make a little base. So I'm going to do some white and my black. Mix those two together. We're just going to make a dark charcoal gray. And that's what we'll do for the base here. So it kind of has a, a metallic feel to it. little light has that dark charcoal gray base. So it's like a little square here and we're just going to use the little bit brush. The hold is very much like how you would hold a pencil. There's a couple of options on the string part here. So you can let it completely dry and you can always come back in and do some of that detail work with your permanent marker, which is great for beginners. Um, or you can just do it old school here with the paint. But no judgment if you want to make life a little bit easier. 
But I'm going to dip into that black paint. Sometimes you have to twirl into it to make sure you get a nice fine point. And then we're going to make sure that we've got the light hand and just kind of barely touch down into it. And just follow those little strings. And if you did paint over it, it's really not a big deal. You can actually just make you know new patterns. It's really just long, curly little curvy lines. There's no exact place for them to be. Maybe a little hint of outline. There's a little loop that happened there with the little curved and did a little loop. So we've got all of our black screen work done here. Right, so I'm going to come back in. We had our Viridian sitting out earlier. That was this color here, and it is pretty dark, and that can do a little bit of a darker accent around Hollywood's. So I do just long curved lines come out from the base of the berries there and really just that little accents just about all that's needed there. You can just kind of add little curves here and there. So this will be this little bit here, and we've got our white paint and our primary cyan blue. And just a hint of our viridian too is really pretty. So again, this would be a mix of viridian, primary cyan blue, and then our titanium white. Those three colors. I'll do a little twist into that paint. And initially here it is just a little circle. Okay. 
Okay, then coming out from that snowflake, you just want to make little lines. That looks like a little sun. Very childlike. So again, a sun just like what you made in grade school. See, I told you that even if you painted over this, you'd be okay. Very simple. scary at all. all right, and we're going to add a little bit of white to this now. I'll twirl the head of the brush. And then at the end, we're going to do just like a little diamond. A little diagonal. Here to here, it looks like a little diamond on each side. So now a lot more light, and we're going to reinforce this shape a little bit, which is more of a white accent. Coming in over the top. A few more little diagonals off on the side. So those are subtle little 
snowflakes happening in the back, and then I can even come back in with an even more subtle look. I'm coming right in with pure viridian here, which is this lovely color here. And a little bit of water, twirling the head of the brush into the paint to make it very fine point on the end. And these are the little diagonal lines too. Just kind of add a little bit of fun pattern. With all these little layers, it starts to build and it's a fun little abstracted reference to that little snowflake. It's looking super, super cute. All right, I'm gonna take my little bit brush now, go back in with just pure white. We're gonna add just a little tiny, almost looks like you make a little parenthesis, just a little reflective light on every single one of these little light, Christmas lights, light ornaments. going to do just a hint of reflective light on the holly berries as well. There's a little trick here. We're going to use the end of the little bit brush. We're going to dip into the white paint. See, there it is on the end. And then we just kind of tap down. Just barely touch. See, there's that little ball of light. A little reflective light there. Just adds a little touch texture. Add 
little bit of water to that, soften it a bit. Grab a little bit more just white. Softly feather that out. done except for just signing our masterpiece and you can use your brush little bit brush paint up black or kit comes with a permanent marker and do that just to make it really easy helpful hint make sure it is absolutely 100% dry or it will just kill your permanent marker instantly if this hits wet paint so it's nice and dry I'm gonna go ahead and Yeah. And we're so proud of y'all. Y'all have done such a fantastic job. Thank you so much for painting with us today. And again, everything you need to paint this at home is on our website, tipsyartist.com. Y'all have a beautiful rest of the day, and we'll see you again very, very soon. Much love to y'all. Toodles.